After World War II, North Carolina really began increasing dramatically the number of people sterilized to the point that we ranked third of all states for the total number of sterilizations. When we look at North Carolina's impacted eugenics population, we're looking at nearly 7,600 people who were sterilized from 1929 through 1974. And as you can see, our chart peaks in the 1950s and 1960s. So when we're discussing that we have victims as young as 10 years of age, boys and girls, then that brings us to the conclusion that we have a significant number of people who are in their 50s and 60s and still very viable people with us today. In 2002, when they uh, had found the files of the eugenics program, and they found out that the state of North Carolina had sterilized 7,600 people, most of them against their will. Before I found out, I thought that I was the only person that it happened to. I was embarrassed, I was humiliated, I was degraded. I would not, I ended up being on Prozac and Sarah Quebel. So the North Carolina Justice for Sterilization Victims Foundation was started in March of 2010 to serve as a central location and clearinghouse for people who were victimized through the state's eugenics board program. There were at least two states which increased the number of sterilizations that they did after the 1950s. Virginia was one, the second was North Carolina. It was a matter of pride for many of the doctors who carried out those sterilizations that they were preventing people who were on welfare from having further children. Fourteen years old. Cut, cut me like a hog. And they operated on me in 48. 64 years ago. And do you remember the, the day of the operation? No, the only thing I remember, they, they, they put a mask on my face, you know, and she told the nurse, you know, told me to sing a song, you know. I remember doing that, you know. And you were in Kingston? Kingston, yeah. Caswell Training School down right there. To this school? The way the welfare. Mama had same, same kids, you know, and it was hard for her on her, you know, to take care of all of us, you know. So to separate me and my two sisters. Two sisters went over around to Jerk, Virginia. And they kept me, put me down in the Kingston, North Carolina. From what I was told, I was supposed that I couldn't get out of that school not unless I let, unless mama signed the paper for me to have the operation. You know, I couldn't I couldn't leave without that. Ah, it was a condition to leave the school? Yeah, 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 I had to be operated on before I could leave the school. And when did you leave the school? In 1951. Human Betterment League. So the movement here was supported by prominent families and doctors. They would distribute things like uh, pamphlets talking about um, morons and how morons shouldn't reproduce um, and a yeah, huge propaganda machine. This association was created in 1947. One of its goals, to take care of the mad and feeble-minded.
here's an editorial. So this person had my job, whoever wrote this had my job in 1947. There are 6,000 school children in Virginia schools who are unable to progress further than the third grade. Certainly these feeble-minded should not be allowed to reproduce. Their descendants are certain to become charges of the state. So this is somebody that, that had my job writing that slop. And each county would have a Department of Public Welfare. Social workers that worked for that would notice poor families, poor people that might be targets of sterilization. They would fill out a petition. They would call them feeble-minded and they would say they were promiscuous, often based on gossip. If they were epileptics, if they were blind, they would go for them. And basically, if anyone in the community, it could be the sheriff, it could be the social worker, it could be your doctor, it could be your parent, it could be your husband, your mom, any relative. If anyone in the community said, I believe that this person should be sterilized, they would send a petition to the state's eugenics board. It was in this building that the famous commission had its headquarters. No trace remains. Have you heard about the story of uh, eugenics? Or things like that? No? no. Mommy. Nothing? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't really know anything about it. No? no. Have you heard something? I have heard something on the news. Uh, but okay. I'd really rather not talk about that right now. Huh. You better get somebody else. <laughs> yes. Yes. You sure have. Yeah. I grew up in the eastern part, the northeastern part of the state. I personally know a family in a rural area of North Carolina that were very affected and are very almost afraid. They don't want to, they, as they put it, they don't want to rock the boat. You know, they depend on assistance from the state. I just know that um, they would tell, back a long time ago, certain officials would tell minorities um, that they had to get sterilized in order to receive uh, welfare benefits. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, it, oh. that's it. As the years started to progress, you started to also see in the 1950s and 1960s a huge increase in the number of African American women who were t starting to be termed as unfit. The object of sterilization in North Carolina was not, I think, primarily to satisfy eugenic doctrine of improving the quality of the, of the population, but to save money. Birth control pills made me sick. Our doctor said that he had something, a birth control plan that would be wonderful. So I went out in the hospital, had the surgical procedure, came out of the hospital and went on with my life and my three kids. This is in 1972, 1976, and I go back to have it undone. But when I meet this man and I get ready to remarry and I go back because I want to have the surgery undone, he laughs, he thinks it's funny. And he tells me then, I'm sterile. And then he laughs again, and I keep telling him, no, 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 that's not what I signed for. That's not what you said. If it had been done to me legally, there would be medical records somewhere. I would have a medical record somewhere saying that I had had, I was sterilized. Why did he perform the surgery? Because he could. He could play God with people's lives. So they actually became, and I guess in their own minds, God. So they could pick and choose and do and not have to ever face the consequences. But now... In July 2012, the Senate in North Carolina opposed compensating the victims of eugenics. But it took us 10 years to get to this point. We started on this process in 2003. 
we would have been the first state out of 38 states to compensate the victims. All the way in the other room. Well, disappointed is not a strong enough word. I just um, can't find the word right now. But uh, I was very, very uh, angry that North Carolina would not do what was morally right to compensate people that they had consciously violated. And, and I have people that tell me they know someone or one of their cousins or their uncles or their aunts, something like that, but they don't know specifically if they are listed. And that's gonna be pretty bad because I'm not even listed. And what will happen for the victims who are not listed? Nothing. Nothing.